I just received my Prusa Core 1, the latest 3D printer from Prusa. Their first Core XY printer with built-in enclosure. I ordered it as a kit and it's still in the box. So I wanted to do an unboxing and assembly video and give you my first impressions. Before we start, I would like to point out that I bought this with my own money, so no one is paying me to talk about this. I've been wanting an upgrade from my Prusa Mark III for a while now. It's been an incredibly reliable printer, but this new generation has some nice features, and I'm really excited about the faster print speeds. So here's the box as it arrived. I bought it as a kit because I like to save money where I can, and the Prusa kits are fantastic. They are a great way to learn more about how a 3D printer is put together. This really helps if you need to fix, maintain, or upgrade it down the road. The box is fairly heavy at 61 pounds or 27 kilos, but it has these convenient handles on the side so it's easy enough to move around. So I hate to start this video off on a negative point, but I think it's worth saying. When I purchased this, they gave me an estimate of 3-4 to four weeks of lead time, so I knew I was going to have to wait. Unfortunately, it was more like 7.5 weeks before it actually shipped. I was getting really frustrated with this. I was considering cancelling my order, but I was really psyched to use the new Core 1, so I stuck it out. To be fair, at the time I purchased this printer, the US tariff situation was still uncertain. I think Prusa might have been scrambling to accommodate the changing tariffs. To their credit, they did notify customers about the extra challenges when shipping to the US, and I never saw the price increase or any extra charges for shipping, so maybe Prusa decided to pay the tariffs themselves instead of passing the price onto the customers. I don't know, but either way, shipping was easy and hassle free, it just took longer than expected. And maybe this is no longer an issue. The current lead time estimate is only 1-2 to two weeks. With that out of the way, let's open up and see what we got. So inside the box, you have a thank you letter, a quality control checklist, a 3D printing handbook, a flash drive for transferring your files to the printer, and a bag of Gumi Bears. I've always liked the Gumi Bears that they add to their kits. It's one of those unique Prusa details that make their kits so much fun to build. Under that, we have a bunch of boxes containing all the parts we need to build our printer, including the plexiglass sheets, the stepper motors, the electronics, the frame, and so much more, all neatly packed and organized. We also have our print sheets. It comes with a PEI sheet, but I bought an extra texture sheet. You shouldn't need an extra sheet unless you do a lot of printing. I have just a single PEI sheet for my Mark III and it has been running just fine for years. The extra sheet is just so I have a choice of surface texture, either smooth or rough. Unlike when I built my Mark III, the assembly manual is entirely online. The online manual is just as thorough as the print manual that I've used in the past. They've also added hotkeys so I can navigate the manual with the arrow keys and even put it into full screen mode. So my plan was to do a full assembly video. However, after looking at the online manual, I realized that this would make this video way too long. I was under the impression that the build process was going to be very quick after looking at the promotional video. I was thinking that it was just 4 or 5 large semi-assembled pieces that needed to be screwed together. But it's more like the Mark III, where everything needs to be assembled. It might even be more steps than the Mark IV, because you also have to assemble the case and the more complicated Core XY mechanics. So I'm just going to share with you my experiences with the assembly process and any frustrations that I encountered. One of the first things that I noticed is that this is kind of an unusual design for Prusa. I know it's their first fully enclosed Core XY design, but just look at the parts. Most are steel. Prusa has always relied on a heavy use of 3D printed and easily sourced parts, like aluminum extrusions, in their designs. This printer doesn't use any aluminum extrusions and few 3D printed parts. Usually, the 3D printed parts are all ABS. But I can see two different materials. One looks like ABS, and the other, I'm guessing, is some carbon fiber material. It is very light and has no flex to it. I even see some injection molded parts and machined aluminum parts, which is a first for Prusa. So with the new parts and materials, this is going to make for an interesting build. In the plastic parts, I can see that Prusa still likes to use holes for inserting nuts. 
This method can be effective, however, it is challenging to pull off correctly. Too tight and the nuts won't fit, too loose and the nuts keep falling out. There were several spots where I had trouble because the nets kept falling out. I needed at least three hands, one to hold the nut in place, one to hold the parts in position, and one to tighten the screw. I personally prefer heat set inserts because they will stay in place no matter what which makes the parts easier to assemble and disassemble. Interestingly, Prusa did use heat set inserts but only for the hinge. This may have been a one-off or maybe we will see more inserts being used by Prusa in the future. One of the main problems that I keep having, though it might seem a bit trivial, is that the feet keep falling off. The feet are meant to keep the steel frame from scratching your desk and reduce vibrations while printing. So they seem kind of important. The feet look to be of a good quality with a thick chunk of rubber, but the adhesive that they use is very weak. With all the times that you have to lift the printer up and put it on its back, put it back on its feet, then rotate it 90 degrees, it is very likely that you're going to knock the feet off. The more times that you knock the feet off, the weaker the adhesive becomes until they just won't stick at all. Now this isn't just my problem. Reading the comments in the manual reveals that a lot of users have had the same issue. The simple solution is to use some double sided tape. I didn't have any double sided tape so I just wrapped some single sided tape into a loop and it works like a charm. One of the last steps is to correctly tension the belts. This is measured by the frequency of the belts when you pluck it like a guitar string. Prusa provides you with an app and a website for measuring the sound frequency. I personally found these tools to be unresponsive. However, I found a different app in the Google Play Store that did the trick. A link is in the description. One thing that neither the manual nor the Prusa apps mentioned was that with a Core XY design, since the belts are tied to the same carriage, if you change the tension on one belt, it is going to affect the other one as well. To tension them correctly, you have to keep going back and forth. Prusa provides three methods for accessing your printer remotely. They have Prusa Connect, their cloud-based solution, Prusa Link, their land-based solution, and the Prusa app, which is available on Android and iPhone. Prusa Connect seems to be their flagship product. The interface is the most feature rich and acts as a hub for the other products. It shows the current printer status, including nozzle and bed temperatures. It gives you access to the internal storage for uploading models, as well as starting prints, managing print queues, and viewing print history. If you have a camera attached, you could also view the camera output here. You could even control the printer by setting the extruder coordinates, the nozzle and heat bed temperatures, and filament extrusions. In contrast, Prusa Link doesn't have as many features. To be fair, it is labeled as beta, so more features are likely to be released. So far, it only shows basic information about your printer, including nozzle and heat bed temperatures, and gives you the ability to manage internal storage and start prints. You have no ability to manage the printer's settings or view the camera's output, if you have one attached. The main benefit of Prusa Link over Prusa Connect is that you don't have to register with Prusa if privacy is a concern for you. Both interfaces seem to be missing a feature that I find important. They allow you to upload files and delete files, but you can't move or rename files. Now I know you can just delete files and re-upload them with a different name or to a different location, but being able to move them on the printer is just more convenient. Even printables.com allows you to rename and move files after you upload them. I hope this is a feature that will be added in the near future. Now, the Prusa app is somewhere in between. It requires you to log into Prusa Connect, but doesn't offer as many features. I can't find a way to manually upload files to the printer, but you can still view the internal storage, start print jobs, and view your print queue. It also gives you access to view the camera and basic printer controls. Though, you can upload files using EasyPrint. It allows you to pull files directly from printables.com, slice them on your phone, and start a print job. However, I wouldn't recommend it. EasyPrint has fewer features than Prusa Slicer, and from my experience, the print times are about 30% slower. It's time to test the print quality. I started with a standard Benchy at 0.2mm resolution using the default profile in Prusa Slicer. 
The print looks good, only a few fine strings and some minor VFAs on the side, and it only took 37 minutes. I also printed the same thing on my older Mark III, and honestly, I think the print from the Mark III looks better. There are some fine stringing, but the surface is smoother. This might indicate that I need to spend some more time tuning the belt on my Car 1. But the big difference is the print time. It took the Mark III 1 hour and 17 minutes to print the same model. That is more than twice as long. I also tried the 14 minute and 8 minute Benchy G code provided by Prusa on the Car 1. Compared to the previous Benchy, there is a little bit more ripple effect on the side. You can see some sagging on the overhangs and there are a few gaps in the top layer but it is still a quality Benchy. With the 8 minute Benchy, you see much more uneven textures on the side and significant gaps on the top layer. However, the speed is still quite impressive. Ultimately, this is a fantastic printer with good quality and fast print times that I have enjoyed quite a bit. However, after using this for a while, I have noticed a few issues that I would like to bring up. One of the main issues that I have seen with this printer so far is the limited access to the top. The only access to the inside is through the front door. This is fine for removing prints, but challenging if you need to work on the extruder. An issue that I've encountered frequently is brittle filament breaking off in the PTFE tube. This is a filament runout issue, and while the printer is smart enough to detect a filament runout, it can't unload a filament that is far inside the tube. What you have to do is open the side hatch in the extruder and pull out the filament using a pair of pliers. To be fair, I am a hobbyist. I might not print for weeks at a time, and I don't take the time to remove my filament and store it properly, so most of my filament is old and brittle. This generally doesn't affect print quality, as far as I'm concerned, but if I leave my filament in the core 1 for a few days without using it, it will break off in the tube. This was never an issue for bed slingers as they didn't require a tube so removing broken filament was easy. Printers require heated chambers to print advanced materials like ABS. However, I like the chamber for managing printer fumes. As a hobbyist, my printer is just sitting in the living room so it can easily affect the air quality of my house. Fortunately, I mostly print in PLA which should be safe but I'm not sure I would want to use it with filaments that produce more toxic fumes like ABS. Prusa does sell an air filter for the Core 1 for around $76, but there are still holes in the case where the fumes could pass through. That being said, I don't smell many PLA fumes with the door closed, so maybe this isn't as big of an issue as I'm making it out to be. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I hope this gave you a better sense of what to expect with the Prusa Core 1 kit. If you found this video useful, please give me a like. And don't forget to subscribe to see future projects using the Core 1. Thanks for watching.